You folks know that I love uranium, but there's many things that are found in uranium that are also radioactive and quite interesting. For example, radium. Radium was discovered in 1898 by Madame Curie. She's perhaps one of the most famous physicists in the world, not the absolute most famous, but one of, uh, the discoverer and namer of several radioactive substances, including polonium, and in this case, radium. Radium was used extensively for watch handles. Let me just zoom this in here for you to see. This little vial contains a single watch hand replacement. Watches used to be sold with these, and if the radium that was in your watch stopped glowing, when uh, it could be easily replaced by one of these little guys. This is by Best Fit, number 33. Anyhow, these watch handles were often painted by hand, typically by women who had short life expectancies as a result of it. If you are interested in looking that up, I'll put a link. They're called Radium Girls, and what was done to them was quite tragic. It is a dangerous substance used for radioluminescence primarily by people. Um, it has other uses as well. It's an alpha decaying uh, radionuclide. It decays by emission of an alpha particle, and it decays into radon-222, so it decays into a radioactive gas. And then that slowly goes down a chain of decay after decay after decay after decay, which gives many of the classic gamma uh, peaks that one might see on a gamma spectrometer. Um, it gives them the character that you expect to see when you look at uranium. I'll show you that in a moment. But let me show you what this looks like under a black light. Under a black light, you can see very clearly the glow from the radium. These are, this is probably radium salts, but just radium in general tends to glow. Um, it's out of focus. Let me get the other one. You'll see that it also glows. So they're both glowing, these nice little watch hands. And in the dark, back when these were fresh, they would have allowed you to see what time it was without having to turn on the light. Interestingly enough, let me put these two down, this radium compass does not glow. In fact, if in, in absolute darkness, you can pick up a tiniest touch of a glow, but it almost doesn't exist at this point. The compass is just simply too old. So let's see how radioactive these things are. Okay. I've opened the top of the compass to get a better feel for its radioactivity. So let's make sure we have all the sounders off, except for this. This is an inspector. USB Geiger counter with a big wide pancake tube that's able to, uh, to sense alpha, beta, gamma, and x-ray radiation without too much trouble. It's getting about 30 to 40 counts per minute. That's just normal radioactive background inside of the room. Let's put this over here and see what we get. Now this isn't going to be Chernobyl. It's not a bar of plutonium. But it is radioactive and it used to sit in somebody's pocket. And you know what that means. It was a little close to certain parts that people don't like to usually irradiate. Let's see how high we get. So from the front of the compass, we're getting 980, or 880 to 920 counts per minute, more or less. So. Let's now check the back of the compass. See if it's different. As you can see, the back's a little bit less. The reason is because most of what's coming out of the back is gamma rays. The betas, x-rays, and other things are being blocked by the metal housing. And you'd get similar readings if you used my pancake probe here. It basically has the same kind of Geiger counter. 
In fact, even the front cover I've disclosed is doing a pretty good job of shielding it. But still, in your pocket, maybe not the best of things. So let's see what the dose rate is. Now this Polymaster here is going to look through the um, metal, if you will, the gamma rays that this is sensitive to, will go right through it. Now we were at 0 0.05, 0 0.06 microsieverts per hour, somewhere in there, not very much. A one, uh, you know, five or six one hundredths of a microsievert. Oops. Now we're sitting at nearly one microsievert per hour. Not bad. This thing's putting off nearly a microsievert per hour of radiation in your pocket. So that would be about eight microsieverts of, of, of radiation exposure in an eight hour day with this in your pocket. And that's not the end of the world, but it's not really where I'd like it to be. So now let's test and see what the Ludlum thinks. All right, the Ludlum is set to zero. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 1,000 counts per minute. We have a one inch sodium iodide probe, one inch sodium iodide probe, let's cut the sound on. And now let's expose to the compass. Looks like 120,000 plus or minus. Yeah, about 120,000 counts per minute. Lock that in place. Yep, about 120,000 counts per minute. What's even more interesting is in the times 10 mode, it just gets blown away. Look at that. So, What does it look like under a gamma spectrum? If we could take a device like this that's able to sense this uh, gamma radiation, convert it into a X by Y graph of energies so that we could see what's coming out of this thing, what would we find? Would it be similar to what we get from uranium? Or would it be its own special thing? All right, so the spectrum has finished. And as you can see right here, this is the spectrum. It starts in low energy gamma rays that were detected, which get filed all the way up here to high energy. All right, so it looks like the spectrum is now finished and I've converted it to an image for you. So all gamma rays that were detected were placed in one of 1,024 channels, channel 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, all the way up to 1024. These channels correlate to energies found, so a higher energy gamma ray was put in a higher channel, a lower energy gamma ray that was detected was put in a lower channel. I then uh, basically calculated what the energy level would be for each channel. So we start at, I know this is negative 28, but the reality is this is around mm, 10 or 15 kilo electron volts, kilo electronic volts when I st uh, start detecting stuff, and I end somewhere around 1482 uh, kilo electron volts. Okay, so that's that's the about the range. It's a, the 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 calibration's off a little bit, but not but not by very much. So here's what we see. Most importantly, right off the bat, you see these guys right here and this right here. They're sometimes referred to as a hand or the fourth fingers and the thumb of uranium. You have radium two twenty six right there. That's that's radium right there. Radium two twenty six at 186.22 kilo electron volts. That's it right there. Next, these three guys right here come from, from uh, lead, lead 214 specifically, which is radioactive. It's one of the daughters eventually, radium 226. It goes through a decay series and eventually gets to lead two, uh, 214. So you get these three guys right here, and that's the hand. See, see? the pointer finger, the uh, middle finger, <laughs> the uh, ring finger, and the pinky finger. And this little guy right here is the uh, bismuth 214's uh, peak at 609.31 kilo electron volts. This is the, the, these guys are here for like every single uranium spectrum you're ever going to see. So after that, we move into a few of the lesser known ones that are not as important 
And in reality, they're very important, but they're not as important to most people who are doing amateur gamma spectroscopy because a lot of equipment that that's at the amateur level is not going to pick them up very well. Um, if you saw this in the logarithmic view, which I'll show you in a moment, this would be more noticeable. But you have bismuth-214, protactinium-234M, protect bismuth, bismuth, potassium-40, barely registers. They're all over here. Um, before I show you the logarithmic view, let me just no note that there's uh, potassium, sorry, potassium. There's lead-210 right here at 46 kilo electron volts. This little dude right here is probably uranium-235. It's possible that that could be what that is because you're going to probably get some uranium mixed in with this. It's supposed to be chemically purified, but there could be a little left over. It may be something else as well, too. So I'm not actually sure what this little guy is. It shouldn't really be here, but it is. So uh, there you go. Now this is the spectrum right here, similar to the image you just saw. Now I haven't, this is the raw spectrum, and I haven't fixed my calibration, which was off on this one a little bit. You'll notice the energy ranges are a little bit wider open than they were in the other one. But I just wanted to show you, this is the linear view. I'm zooming up and down, changing with this the values for this axis. If I switch to a logarithmic view, this is what it looks like. And you'll notice there's a lot more peaks. Bismuth and some other things make peaks all the way down here. And it's kind of interesting to sometimes go along and figure all of these guys out. And the real, oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's clear our ROIs. The real meat, however, of, of any uranium spectrum is going to be pretty much right here, these guys. Radium-226, bismuth-214, sorry, radium-226, lead-214, 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 bismuth-214. Bismuth, lead, 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 radium. If you see these guys right here, you know you have a natural uranium spectrum or perhaps a radium spectrum. This guy right here comes from the lead shielding. So there you go. That's what that looks like. Now let me show you what a uranium spectrum is so that you can compare these two and see if you think they don't look a little bit similar to one another. So if you were wondering about those little tiny dials and how radioactive they are, I have one of them I'm testing right here. And as you can see, this is the hotter of the two. They're both radioactive, but one of them is more radioactive than the other, which is kind of interesting. I wonder why. The half-life of radium-226 is 1,600 years, plus or minus. So it's not like it would have decayed by very much. There just must be less of it on the actual watch handle. They were painted by hand often, later on, I think, by machine. So we're getting 500 counts per minute. I've seen 600 off of this before if it's in the right position. So there we go, we're getting closer to 600. But realistically, that's not a lot of uh, counts per minute off of this. Now if we want to test and see what the actual dose is off of this thing, let's get up here, dose. We're looking at 0 0.09 microsieverts per hour, not much. We put this over top of it, it'll go up a little bit after a moment or two. Point, well, oh, look at that, it's gone up a little tiny bit. So the radiation that's coming off of this isn't going to be that damaging to a person. I don't think it would be the greatest idea to have it on your wrist all of the time. Please understand that radium is extremely common and easy to find. It can be found all over the place in antique shops. It can be found in your uh, you know, parents' uh, uh, attics and in basements. And you'll find compasses. You'll find watches. A famous thing, of course, are clocks. You'll find clocks. various devices, um, aviation dials, old ones, some of them are extremely radioactive. Anything that has a dial that would need to be lit or where you'll find the radium. So just keep that in mind if you're looking through antiques, if you're a person who deals with antiques, be careful, own a Geiger counter, test stuff, because I find these things all over the place. They're everywhere and somebody would open this up and start playing with this unknowing, unknowingly exposing themselves to radium-226 and then it gets in your food, then it gets in your eyes, and gets other places. And it's something you really don't want to get too much on yourself. Now people survive the 50s and 60s, um, so obviously this stuff isn't, you know, cyanide, but it's not really something you 
kind of want to get all over yourself. You'll find it all over eBay, so just be careful. Be careful in handling nuclear materials like this, because they are nuclear materials, even though, yes, fine, they're just watch handles, but they are radioactive. Anyhow, so this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Uh, let me know if you own anything radium, that has radium in it, rather, and um, let me know how you store it and keep it. I'm just kind of curious randomly. Um, I'm not going to offer people storage and keeping it advice, per se, but I'm just kind of interested in hearing. And, of course, don't, uh, don't forget to uh, click the thumbs up button, unless you didn't like it. And uh, don't forget to subscribe and all that sort of stuff. And hopefully when my knee heals, I have a sprained knee, I can get down to the lab and start making some better videos because my, it, my knee being sprained has really caused me a lot of trouble when it comes to making videos. So, there you go.